time for cash tags. We'd like to welcome in Megan Brantley, the VP of research at likeboyo.com, and welcome back Jenny Horn, fast market contributor. And Jenny, as I said, and as you told us before, it's Netflix day. It is Netflix day. And it, it seems like Netflix has been talked about a lot because we hear about new streaming services, it seems like every day. It seems like every day there's going to be a new competitor to Netflix. Someone's trying to take more shares away from Netflix. Netflix has kind of a troubling story, Megan, and I don't know if you're seeing that at all in your consumer purchase intent data. So whenever we look at Netflix, we're listening for people talking about downloading Netflix or subscribing to Netflix, you know, renewing their subscription, more so than viewership when we're talking about purchase intent. And so quarter over quarter, purchase intent is pretty flat. I think partially this is because they had such a strong Christmas performance. You know, they had Bird Box and all the Black Mirror releases that came out that really bolstered those subscriptions. Um, but year over year, we're seeing about, um, we're seeing a significant increase. I mean, nothing crazy, but about a 6%, I think, right now. So I think that that's, that's promising for Netflix, just in the fact that although subscription fatigue is real, so far Netflix isn't seeing that tipping point. Yeah, Megan, you made a good point there. So uh, a lot of the data from like Folio is based on, uh, you know, not so much how much you're watching it, but how many people are subscribing to it. I think that's a big key because uh, I don't think pe as many people are uh, streaming this as, or the hours maybe are starting to, uh, you know, stabilize a little bit and not going up. Yeah, I think that for us, you know, we want to track when people are spending money, you know, when they're actually renewing those subscriptions, because that's how, that's what allows us to correlate to revenue and what allows us to, makes our data so powerful. But just for reference, I think part of what's driving that those subscriptions are their original content. And you can see that viewership really starts to pick up in 2019. You know, they're really amping up their original content and they're bringing in big names. You know, now you see these actors and actresses that you'd normally have to go to the movies to see. And it's just in Netflix on a random Friday pops up and you're like, oh cool, I'm gonna check this out. And you can see that they did a really good job over Christmas and New Year's, and then it's amping up again this summer. So far, they're really capitalizing on times when people are idle and can actually watch a lot of content. Yeah, what's interesting is your data only goes till 7-1. I'd be curious to see if Stranger Things had any sort of pop because that was something that was so heavily talked about. I know Tom was a really big fan of Stranger Things this <laughs> season, right? I've not seen it at all, and I don't plan on it. <laughs> but th this is a company that, I mean, it's interesting because Netflix was kind of the leader in the streaming space, but I've always been a big advocate of I'm going to keep subscribing because my membership is like $8.99 or something very cheap, but if with HBO and Hulu and Netflix increasing their costs, will I just go back to cable? I mean, it seems like things are kind of going backwards now, and no one really knows what the future of this streaming will be, and that's kind of expressed on social media, absolutely. So our first tweet is from JP who says, Netflix looks like it will test the 50-day moving average before earnings. Usage data and traffic data look very bad. Lots of competition coming in. At 360, expectations are very high for the next five years' growth and profitability, and it's became clear that they will not be able to meet expectations. Hey, JP, <laughs> uh, you short this stock by chance? <laughs> I mean, think about this guy. I mean, he's basically writing his own book uh, story as far as investing goes, uh, because the growth has always been there for Netflix. International is where they're gonna grow moving forward. Uh, you really have to take a look at some of these subscriber numbers that they're expecting. They're expected to add 4.7 million international net ads, 300,000 U.S. paid. Saturated here in the U.S., it's all about international growth. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see. But that guy's just playing his own book. So you think it's still a positive story for Netflix? Uh, I didn't say that because <laughs> two of their, two of their uh, top shows for viewership are leaving in the next year. That gets right into my next tweet. There we go. <laughs> so our next tweet is from Shiv Arbal, who says, the most watched Netflix shows are non-originals and its top two, Friends and The Office, are both leaving. So Megan, I know you care about this because when the Friends <laughs> news came out, I saw that you tweeted about it. So tell me a little bit about what we're seeing here, because I'm very upset <laughs> about this, personally. Yes, I was personally devastated as well. Um, I think that those are shows that you know, when you don't have time to find something, they're just easy to have on in the background. They're quick watches. And I think that that's, you know, important for Netflix to have a library like this. But I think that, um, you know, sentiment wise, we did see sentiment start to drop a little bit. It was around 78. Now it's around like 72% for Netflix. So I think that 
consumers are maybe getting a little bit worried about what they have to offer, but the really the bright spot is their original content. I think that another thing that was just announced, you know, the Emmy nominations just came out and HBO and Netflix far led the pack over anyone else. I think Netflix had 117 nominations for their content. So the content that they are creating, you can't get anywhere else. You know, you can't get it in NBC or um, other affiliates, you know. So I think that that's really key that they continue to leverage that. And I think that's why they've been investing so heavily in original content because they may have seen the writing on the wall with all of these things coming. Yeah, you bring up a great point there, Megan. And that's, that's a concern for me also moving forward is the cash burn to create this original original content because they're not going to have those eyes on it. And and I watched Netflix. Jenny saw me yesterday at the gym. I was streaming the office. <laughs> if that goes away, maybe I drop my Netflix subscription, you know, who knows? But I think, uh, you know, Megan brings up a great point in, in the fact that they are bringing more original content, Stranger Things being one of those, uh, to kind of hook people and get people to spend money because uh, according to Megan's data, it, it doesn't matter how much they're watching as long as they keep paying that monthly <laughs> subscription fee. Well, I think the big point that Megan makes too is what choice did they have? If at some point all these, you know, they, basically Netflix proved concept for the rest of these studios, now they're realizing, hey, this is just gonna be easier for us just to do it ourselves. If Netflix didn't have this original content, you know, what, what service would they be providing? Yeah, I wish they would give us more clarity on cash burn. I think that's gonna be key, but they never do, you know, how much they're actually, the, the de uh, development costs, and especially if they're bringing in these new popular people that Megan mentioned, uh, you know. And Megan, real quick before we let you go here, as we're, we're coming up on time, we're looking at earnings tomorrow, obviously, and we know so much of the growth story, at least, is about the international side, which you guys aren't looking at, but this stock's basically hung out in this, you know, $20 range, $30 range for most of the year. With that being said, and you're looking at your data, do you guys have really a lean one way or another looking at this earnings announcement based off the quarter? I think that so far things have been pretty in line with Netflix. Um, quarter over quarter is pretty flat. Year over year is up a good bit or up a decent amount. And so I think that Netflix so far um, isn't facing the headwinds from all of these other streaming competitions yet. That's not to say that they won't, but for right now, um, it looks okay. Alrighty, I think that's a good place to end it as I think that's sort of sometimes enough to even be a reason for it to go up. You know, if everything's just okay and everything's expected to be bad, sometimes that's a, a good reason for it to go up. But Megan, we really appreciate yeah. you joining us today and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a great day, guys.